fleet in the tactical role is due now that the Atlas fleet, fleet is complete, because the 22nd example was delivered from the factory in Seville on the 22nd of May this year, which completes the development, delivery and production phase of the Atlas program for the RAF. And they've been very heavily involved in multinational operations in recent years. Look to your left, and here comes the Airbus Atlas C1. ton load by parachute over Salisbury Plain, which was the heaviest load ever airdropped by a UK military aircraft. Flying Fortress Sally B to go back into the air, which it did yesterday, just in time to practice. Very nice note from Suzanne, and she says, I've organised a very special. Somewhere in the cross seat, so enjoy your day here at Memorial to the thousands and thousands of American airmen who flew from these shores during World War II. Look out to your left, B-17 Sally B in formation with its escort fighter, the P-47 Thunderbolt. deserving of all our thanks for the work they put in to getting this aircraft back into the skies. And I think as Sally B taxis passed, we'd all appreciate you showing your appreciation for them, for Ellie Salingbow and everyone else who has ensured that the site we just saw was made possible again. Now diving in from the left, the Republic P-47D Thunderbolt. One of the biggest, biggest and heaviest of all single-engined, single-seat fighters of the war years, the Thunderbolt. But one possessed of absolutely outstanding performance, both in the air-to-air -air and the air-to-ground roles. When the Public Aviation first came up with its proposal for a new pursuit fighter, as the Americans call them, that they called the XP-47 prototype for, it's a very different machine from the XP-47. The P-47 
37 men landing on, and it was flown for us today by Alex Smee. Um, uh, teaching assistant and now teaching what German French. Have to be flexible nowadays. My wife is very CIA as well. Yeah, Lauren. Um, she loved it. Six, yeah. Sixteen. Yeah. Yeah.
enormous celebratory static display at the Royal International Air Tattoo at RAFF of this July, alongside a huge array of current and other former Aeronautica Militare types. But this is the first time we've seen it in the UK in these colours this summer. And Martin Tesley from the Norwegian Air Force Historical Squadron uh, joins me now. Uh, Martin, this is a very meaningful scheme, isn't it? Absolutely. So uh, we have uh, put up the um, Italian uh, markings. Uh, the, the first uh, uh, fighter jet uh, and uh, also led the Norwegian Air Force into the Jet H. Uh, and uh, it was uh, used in the Norwegian Air Force for six years as a fighter aircraft.
Hadley, but cavorting in front of us, we've got the glorious Hadley, the handle of that can is a chipmunk. We've then got the Scottish Aviation Bulldog, which largely replaced the chipmunk, and the Slingsby Firefly, which actually had a hand in replacing both. Yes, now we're moving forward quite a bit because now we have a nose wheel. At the very least, yes, and the, uh, uh, the chipmunk was designed as a Tiger Moth successor for both the RAF and the Royal Navy to be produced both in Canada. Bulldog in turn was replaced by the crop fusion which we had hoped to have in today's display, which unfortunately you were flying away from Sydney for in service with number three yeah, flying training school. The Central so Flying School brought them into use in numbers during 1933, and they served with a large number of university air squadrons as well. So the takeoff weight is just 600 kilos, and of course, while it's in operation, it has zero emissions and a noise level of just 16 decibels. Top speed just under 100 knots, ceiling of 12,000 feet, and it has 50 minutes of endurance. And Pepistrel also produces both the electric power plant and its battery. Alpacas, yoga, and now electric aircraft. It's able to take advantage of a growing network. Oh, the Firefly. Formation in from the right.